And it's really interesting, right at the beginning we had a couple of questions in terms of up on the screen, in terms of what people wanted to get out today. And, and some of these we're going to talk about, uh, Rebecca and I, uh, of, of what people want to get out. And one of the things was attracting quality talent. Um, and that's one of the challenges that uh, you know, Travis Perkins faced. Um, so we're going to look at, you know, in terms of how we looked at the challenges, the business case, and how ultimately we attracted uh, attract good quality candidates, but also, more importantly, how we bring things like employer brand and diversity. So I can talk about that, but Rebecca, you're best place to talk about Travis Perkins. I am indeed. Are you going to drive? I'll do the click. <laughs> So, um, taking a lead from Dan, actually, in, in the previous session, just a quick show of hands in how many of you know any of the Travis Perkins brands beyond Travis Perkins and Wix? Does anyone know any of our others? Two or oh, three hands. There should be two hands at the back going up. Thank you, <laughs> team. <laughs> Um, that's, that's fairly indicative, thinking about the size of the group in terms of what you'd see typically. So we, we are quite a big business. Um, we have just shy of 30,000 colleagues around the UK across tw over 20 different businesses and brands. And you'll see all of them up there. So Travis Perkins is the one that a lot of people know. Wix is the other. If you know any of the others, you'll probably know either Tile Giant or Benchmarks, because they're probably the two others that are um, consumer facing. All the rest of our businesses are trade businesses, so B2B. So although we are a very big business, as I say, over 30,000 colleagues, um, and we've been voted one of the best places to work in the UK for the 10th year running, as a brand, we're pretty invisible. Um, and that is one of our biggest challenges. So, it's so embarrassing now when I look back at this. <laughs> this was our career site from about 18 months ago. So it hangs off our corporate site. It's fairly corporate, it's fairly standard. It's not very exciting, um, but you have no idea who we are from that. You can see Travis Perkins, but think about the previous slide and all the different businesses, they're completely invisible. So one of our challenges was how do we bring that to life? So not only are we a bit of a hidden brand, actually when you do start your journey with us, you just don't appreciate the size and scale and the opportunity. And I think that comes to light when you actually go beyond the Travis Perkins brand. So if you're looking for a job with Travis Perkins, 95% you know, of people who landed on the career site landed on Travis Perkins' homepage. So yeah, they knew of the brand. Um, which was fine. However, it then became a bit more confusing if you were looking for a job with Wix. So with Wix, you'd go invariably look for Wix jobs, Wix careers, opportunities with Wix, whatever. And you land on the Wix career page on their corporate site, and you click on a link, and you land here. Now, yeah, that's, some people that know that Wix and Travis Perkins are the same organisation would go, OK, that's fine. Um, but people who didn't would be like, did I click on something by mistake? Um, and then it gets a little bit, you know, you then look at it, okay, I'm going to persevere. Um, so I would like to work for Travis Perkins PLC. I'm hoping that that includes Wix. And then you end up on another style page. So I've now landed, I've gone through to, um, you yeah, know, what effectively is a, a list of jobs. Okay, I'm going to persevere and I'm going to uh, search for a job. Um, so you get the job and suddenly you get all the brands and you start thinking, okay, I'm beginning to think things through. But the biggest challenge is effectively, is effectively all of those jobs are on their Aventure ATS. So I imagine many of you, you know, using an applicant tracking system, whether that is you know, Taleo, Aventure, Success Factors, Workday, many of the big ones, all of the jobs will exist on a URL that's quite similar to that. You know, Workday will be WM3, Taleo will be Taleo.not. Uh, .NET, success factors, etc. Um, and actually, it was even worse, wasn't it, Rebecca? All of those jobs were physically blocked for Google. So Google couldn't actually yeah. find them. So if you looked at how many pages Google could see for Travis Perkins' career site, it was seven. So, you know, a company that has 33,000 employees, Google didn't think they actually had any jobs. So that was one of the, you know, the big challenges was effectively to make sure that those jobs were visible. 
So Rebecca asked me to say, look, okay, where are we? You know, what is the current situation? A lot of talk today is about you know, getting the data, interpreting the data and understanding it. Um, so Rebecca provided a load of information, the marketing team provided a load of information, uh, and we basically worked out you know, how many people were coming to the website. We were getting 8,500 people were actually you know, clicking on apply, but actually 15% of those weren't actually completing an application. Um, and part of this is down to you know, the application workflow, long application forms. But the other part of it is in terms of we weren't, didn't really have any engagement. It's about that quality and you know, engaged candidate. Um, and then Rebecca said, look, you know, let me share with you what we're spending. Because if we're going to do something, you know, one of the biggest challenges is people say, to me, we've got no budget. You know, we, we haven't got an allocated budget. How do we pay for this? Um, so we looked at the actual spend. And in terms of agency use, 15% you know, agency use is not high. But that was over half a million pounds. So it's a case, OK, we've got a figure there. We know how much we're spending on job boards and LinkedIn. So we've got an, you know, an actual fact figures that we can actually use. So I provided this back to Rebecca and um, gave us some insight, which helped build the business case, didn't it? Yeah, so, uh, so that was the, the starting point. So the challenges we had were, how do we attract candidates, first of all, across the different businesses? When we do attract them, how do we engage with them? Because you saw from that job advert, you could see a very... Um, efficient job advert, but it didn't tell you which businesses it was in, it didn't really engage you. Um, and then the application rate, as you saw, wasn't great. So what we wanted to do was increase the traffic to the site, have um, information there that was relevant, so then that people actually applied for the roles and found the relevant roles. Because the other challenge we had was if you found a role, you couldn't see similar roles. So you might be looking at one of our businesses, but didn't realize that if there wasn't an opportunity, there might be a similar role in one of our other businesses as well, unless you went all around the loop and went back through that route as well. So we wanted to increase our traffic. Obviously, we wanted to um, reduce our agency usage. Um, reduce our job board spend and also the amount that we spent with LinkedIn. And by siphoning off budget from that area and ploughing it into the careers site, DJ at the time assured me that we would get 50% um, increase in traffic and a 50% reduction in our agency fee. So that was the basis for the business case. We didn't need additional budget, we just diverted some of our current budget and refocused it a different way. And that was one of the key things, it's a case of looking at where we've worked with other clients, you know, looking at an average you know, increase in traffic, the average increase in applications, and the conversion rate and reduction in job boards. Because you're owning the journey, you're owning your assets, you're owning your marketing. Um, so you know, what we put together, uh, a format, you know, effectively in terms of solution, um, was we needed to look at a, a group platform that allowed all of the brands to actually be surfaced, but also give the big brands like Wix, like Benchmarks, like Tile Giant, the opportunity to actually manage their own uh, career site in their own way. Um, so yeah, what you've got is basically uh, a group website which is home to those brands. And, and if you see along the bottom, you've got the smaller brands. And when I say smaller brands, I don't mean in terms of they're any less value. It's more about the fact they don't, you know, don't have that many jobs at any one time. So they haven't, don't need a big full career site. So they, they use the benefit of a group site. But then you've got Travis Perkins as a builder's merchants, Wix, Benchmarks, Tile Janet, Giants, actually have their own sites as sister sites with all relevant content to their businesses. So it feels like their own uh, career site, but it's all part of that wider family. Um, and that means that you know, as a group site, you know, you're displaying all the brands quite clearly, front and centre, so people can scroll through. Um, but you've also got some you know, key functionality to help people find jobs no matter what brand. And part of that is predictive keyword search. So we all know how to Google things. So you start Googling, you know, you start Googling things and you get op options being presented. The job search works in exactly the same way, giving people suggested searches, vacancies and content. We also all know how to shop. We typically browse jobs in the same way as we browse products. And then coming down the site, it was basically, it, it's designed to be functional. Remember, this is a, you know, effectively a trades uh, environment. Um, latest jobs that are relevant to your location. Don't give jobs to London to pick somebody who's searching in Newcastle. But also giving, it, giving evidence to the employer brand and what was important to, um, you know, Travis Perkins. 
Um, so it's about making it really clear and giving that information across the board. Um, but it's not just, as Rebecca was saying, it's not just about the potential active job seeker. It's actually giving them insight because people could find jobs on the old website, but actually it's about giving them insight into what it was like to work as a business. So one of the key things, you know, for example, if somebody lands on this job from Google or um, you know, Indeed, you've got relevant content against it. So imagine if you're shopping, if you're looking for a Sony LCD t LED TV or whatever, you've got other suggestions alongside it. And as Rebecca mentioned, you've got similar jobs. So you're helping somebody actually move around and find what's relevant to them. Um, so if I'm a credit controller, I'm thinking, OK, what's the actual career path like? So I can click on yeah, content, take your finance career further, find out what it's like. I can then read about that and find out what it's like to work at Travis Perkins. This content is then shared socially. So social content, imagine somebody's now landed on this from Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera. Um, they're reading it, um, and at the bottom, you're touching them on the shoulder and saying, here's some jobs you might be interested in. So it's about getting that person uh, to understand more about uh, yeah, Travis Perkins as, a, as an organization and the various brands within it without them having to dig around, go hunting. It's all there. Um, and that's where it came down to one of the things that Rebecca said to me. It must have been about three years ago when we first met at one of these events. It was about employer brand. It was really important to mm. the business. Um, so just before we move on to employer brand, that was our second big win around the way the website was constructed. So the feedback we got from the different um, boards within the different businesses were we get we're part of the TP group, but we want our own identity. So as soon as you're able to show them that within a set framework, they could put some of their own content up and talk about what was important to them as a business, suddenly they were completely bought into it. And then the, um, our first step into machine learning got us all giddy with excitement that you could start typing things up and it would predict either jobs or profiles or articles. Again, that really engaged the business. They felt that was really exciting. They suddenly had a voice to the candidate market, albeit within a controlled environment. So that got us um, the next step in terms of our journey. But around the branding piece, the other thing that we wanted, as well as the cost saving and the visibility of um, the different brands, we wanted to become what we've called a destination site. So people come to us not just to look um, around jobs, but also to think about what else do we do? So what else is there within the business? Um, so we, uh, we put video content up. Um, and what we try and do, we've got various um, initiatives. Some of it's fairly polished, some of it isn't. Um, but certainly where we can, we like to give a flavor of what it's like as, as part of the group. We're not playing that video. That's next. That's next. <laughs> <laughs> and also employee stories, so focusing on real people. Um, when I started um, looking at employer branding and people within a previous organization, I remember being told, but you can't use real people because they'll leave and then, you know, the stories aren't real and you have to use a model. And it's very apparent when you're using, I think, a model and when you're using a real person and a real story. And if you manage it properly, it's really easy to put profiles up, take them down. So we've got a bank of profiles that we can use. We can use in different situations. So most of the ones here are around apprentices. So when we are doing our apprenticeship recruitment, lots of different stories that we can serve out to potential candidates. But also we can use socially to either go out to parents, to talk in um, schools, colleges, and start spreading that message. And then using it socially brings people back into our site. So as well as our stories, um, what else could we serve up to people? What is useful? So around apprenticeships, we also started writing articles around when you're looking for your first career journey, how you write a CV, what are the things you need to think about in interviews? Again, things that would be useful for any potential candidates coming to us, but also things that we could push out socially or could be shared and suddenly becomes a much bigger reach and a different purpose in why people are engaging with us. One of our, so we talked a little bit about diversity and inclusion. One of our um, initiatives is very much around X-Forces. So we do a lot of work in that space. Um, and we've worked with the Poppy Factory, who help um, wounded servicemen. And in Armed Forces Week, which was a couple of weeks ago, 
um, we'd produced a video that we pushed out through our social channels. And as you can see, within 24 hours, we had almost 3,000 views of that. Um, and that's still being circulated now, but very quickly can have a real impact. And for us, becomes a very real story of someone in the business, but also somewhere, somewhere that we've actually affected our diversity agenda. And I just want to give you a little bit of an insight of what that actually means. And, and this is very much about you know, promoting, we've talked about diversity, and promoting by actually what you're doing as a business for a good, in a good way. I'm Will Davidson, I'm an ex grenadier guard. I had PTSD, I now work as a high-up driver for Travis Perkins. In 2001 I got out and it's not really um, thought about until many years after of what you've experienced sort of come to a light. Through a friend it, um, knew how I was feeling with things and, and what we'd seen and been through. You know, I had a few counselling meetings and things like that, talked things through. That's where the Poppy Factory came into it. The first time that I met Will, um, he'd come to the Poppy Factory and when I met him he was very introvert and he was very unsure of himself and he lacked confidence. I worked very closely with him to build his confidence and he mentioned that he'd like to work for Travis Perkins. So we looked at what already what he had, how we could get back into the world of driving, which he had a HGV licence, worked on his confidence. I made contact with Travis Perkins. That building awareness of opportunities within the company but but also it's um, a lot of advice and guidance as well so sort of advising veterans on their how to best portray themselves to the CVs or on the phone or like, like to, just trying to extract their transferable skills one of the important things to be a driver is that you turn up to work every day you're on time um, and you're quite routine and disciplined um, and we'll just fight fell into that straight away so it's been it's been a pleasure to have him here really you know if you take a, an ex-veteran on you're taking someone on that's got good life experience um, has probably worked in a very routine disciplined organization um, why wouldn't you um, would be a perfect fit when you go to some places and it's can you do this job can you get this drop off perfectly without causing any problems and it does give you a sense of a well done job I'd definitely recommend Travis Perkins as an employer, as well one they're a great supporter of the forces um, and they understand certain situations of, of how you might be feeling. The Poppy Factory, I'd definitely say they're not just there to, to find you a job, they're actually there to, to, to build you up, to support you from day one. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight into you know, how you know, not just, I suppose, sales content it can be used. I, I think for us, that is a great example of demonstrating one of the things that's really important to us as a business. So we do quite a lot of work with the Poppy Factory and the X-Forces. That doesn't deliver big numbers in terms of recruitment for us. And we don't do a huge amount to shout about it, but it kind of sits within what fits well within our business and what's important to us. So when you talk about employer brand and being an authentic and being real, that absolutely is something that's very real to us as a business and is spread across the business. And I think that's a really good, accurate reflection of it. So it might not drive lots of applications, but certainly in terms of awareness of what we do and within the X-Forces community, that's quite well shared and they are aware of the, of the work that we're doing in that space. So what were the results? So what were the results? Well, they kind of speak for themselves. Huge increase in um, our visitors that whenever DJ or Warren talk to me about numbers, I still question, are they real? Um, but they are, because it just feels almost too good to be true. Um, more importantly, in terms of our applications, because it's great having a load of people coming to your site, we're getting more applications, as you can see, 
but more applicated, uh, more completed, applicated, I've just created my own new word there, um, more completed applications, which is what drives us in terms of um, being successful recruiters. 77% um, of all hires are via the career site, so that was one of our key objectives, that if we're siphoning off budget from other routes, we need people to come through um, our centralised site. Um, and agency usage, so we've reduced our agency usage, we've reduced our spend on job boards, and we've reduced our spend on LinkedIn. And we can probably reduce that even further because we're still learning in terms of the things that are working for us. So that's probably not a figure that I'd want to be our end point, um, <laughs> but certainly is a good indication of the direction that we're going in. Yeah, it's one of the things Rebecca always says to me, are those figures right? Yeah, I've, I've double checked them, triple checked them. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of an insight into the, the, the Travis Perkins uh, journey. Um, but there are some of the things that, you know, that you can take away in terms of you know, what you can do. Um, so the, you know, the first one is a case of you know, so many people, you, when you're recruitment, you, you end up being so close to the coalface, it's difficult sometimes to take a step back. And it's you know, when you take a critical candidate or visitor uh, look at your career site and the actual journey, um, actually be quite critical. What's good, what's not, uh, where can be improvements. Now, I'm not saying you're going to fit you know, fix everything in, in one day, but it's starting to understand with what you've got. Um, understand the key metrics. You know, as recruiters, you know, there's a lot of data we actually get, so make sure you're understanding and got the actual information. You know, and that is really important in terms of the conversion rate. You know, understand what the conversion rate of your website in terms of visitors, uh, applications, completed applications, hires. Um, then there are th basically two things that you can st everybody can start doing now. I mean, a lot of people have mentioned this around the round tables. You know, start collating and telling your stories, giving information, giving help, advice, support, um, whatever that brings your employer brand to life. You know, Jeff Bezos says, you know, what employer brand or you know, brand is what people say when you've left the room, and the stories are what you know, bring your brand to life, not some really uh, expensive uh, creative campaign or anything like that, because the people are saying what they think. Um, and finally, you know, like Rebecca, when you've got those, that information, start looking at your uh, a business case to actually make improvements because it, should be, it shouldn't be a cost. It should actually uh, deliver more return on investment than you're actually spending. Thank you. I don't think there's anything else anything you, you'd like to add. So just on those takeaways, for me, one of the biggest learnings, and it's probably not just over the last three years, it's a little bit longer than that, so I'm not crediting all down to the work that we've been doing, doing with Format, um, is when I used to think about employer brand, it was always you had to develop this employer brand proposition and it had to be big and sexy and sell the business. Um, that's not the case at all. And if you think about all the channels that you have in terms of the so social ch channels now, it's so quick and easy to start telling the story or take a video and post out that on your phone, however it looks, because then it's real, it's authentic, and it gives you a feel for the business. And that's what employer brand is for me now. How does that business feel? Um, and there's some really simple things that even if you can't redevelop your career site or go out to market with a whole host of things, you will have an outlet to get something of the flavour of your business out to your audience. You can do that at any time. You don't have to wait to have this finished proposition. And that's probably my biggest takeaway, I think. Thank you. And thank you for letting us work with you. <laughs> Tash. Yeah. Excellent. You thank questions. you very much, guys.